Um, Joe, can you tell us a little bit um, about if when you find a child, what kind of condition they're in mentally and um, physically? Um, um, we, give we us don't, an example. Sure, sure. We we do we have come in contact with with some of the kids directly, but most of the time it's law enforcement. What we do is we hunt predators online, right? We're trying to identify who is out there targeting our children, mm-hmm. and once we can do that, and we have everything we know that law enforcement needs, right? Because that's that's why we started early conversations with law enforcement agencies, and it's all kinds, federal, state, and local. They're like, Joe, we're really, the resources and budgets, it's difficult to keep up, right? So mm-hmm. we try to do all that legwork, all that heavy lifting for a few months, identifying them. So when we hand it over, it's in the proper format, and they can take it, then they can do a very much faster investigation, make the arrest and convict. So we really don't come across the children very often. Um, but the ones we have, uh, malnutrition, uh, certainly traumatized, um, some nonverbal, even young adults that we've, we were rescued, we got them out, were nonverbal um, because of the trauma and the abuse that they sustained over months or years even. Uh, now, there has been cases where young teenagers were arrested for prostitution and the trafficking had been occurring for less than a year. Obviously, a little better shape, certainly cooperated with law enforcement um, much better because they were just abducted, basically. They, they, met, they met online, they were going to have a date, and then they were just never, never returned, right? They met these people on a date and they took them. So... Uh, but the norm is that the, the, usually poor physical condition and certainly mental health conditions as well. Joe, I see very little in sort of entertainment, Hollywood, even like mainstream news about trafficking. But I see a lot more emphasis on the sex trade being sort of empowering for women, women's rights, you know, kind of thing. I mean, what, what, how big do you think that problem is with adult women? Yeah. I mean, you know, you see, like, I, I think prostitution's big in Vegas. It's legal. You know, the Super Bowl, it happens at the Super Bowl, I hear, is a big deal. Yeah. Um, here's, here's one of the things with media is they're never really correct, <laughs> to put it mildly. Um, like, for example, when you said, hey, in Vegas, it's legal. It's not legal in Vegas. Oh, Although really? the media puts that, you know, everyone just takes – you know, everyone embellishes things, you know, and even that, it's not legal in Las Vegas. There's only one or two counties in Nevada where there are legal brothels. Okay. Uh, so it is illegal in most places. And probably 90% of the cases that are classified as prostitution, that's trafficking. They're, yeah. they're not doing it because they want to. They're, they're in a situation they can't get out of. And it could be maybe it's a, maybe they're on drugs, right? So this person... B- basically, they provide them everything. They'll, they'll make sure they get their dope. They'll make sure they have a house to sleep in, their clothes, their food. They basically control every aspect of their lives to now wear part of the grooming process. They are, they are 98% reliant on these people. That's, that's what's occurring. Um, so even when you talk to the brothels, there was a, a, couple, a couple of survivors that got out of some of the brothels in Nevada, they said it, it was not sex work. I mean, we didn't have freedom. We had a long hours. We only had certain days we could drive into town because we had only a, a one or two cars. And, I, and I'm paraphrasing the article. It's been a while since I read it on the one woman who, who wrote it. So it's not like sex work's empowering. We, we have come across some of the meetings we've been involved with, with law enforcement, public safety and such. They've showed up. You know, they, they, they think the, the, that it should be legal. Listen, I, I, don't, I don't know if it should be or not. What I, can, what I can almost definitively say is if you legalize it, it's not going to make it go away. It's not going to make it better for these individuals. It's going to make it worse. It's just going to be a legal loophole now for people to say it's legal, but they're still going to be manipulated, abused, and and just traumatized with what they're, what they're doing to them. Um, there was even a documentary about it. I think it was Amsterdam where it's legal. 
And they actually had an investigative reporter go in and they're like, it's horrific. The conditions are horrific. We don't have freedom of movement. It's just a loophole in the law for human trafficking to continue under the radar. Um, and, you know, that's that's part of the problem, too, is, you know, media, they skim over it. Now, you'll see some really deep dive journalists that will get into the weeds and really expose the truth. Um, but like we said in the beginning here, it's, a lot of people don't care. It don't affect them. Um, but but it's, you know, we should care because now with this, you know, this Internet explosion and now you got artificial intelligence. I mean, this this tech world is just getting stronger and stronger. It's definitely affecting our children. And if our children, 50 percent of our children, you know, they get exposed to this at a young age, they get abused in their own homes at a young age. This is going to affect how they are the rest of their lives and, and their contribution, not to mention the, the, the troubles they're going to suffer, you know, even in their in their adult stages of life. Um, plus, it's just it, it's it's an evil, evil thing that's occurring here. I mean, it, there's no other way to describe it. It's a group of people making money on the souls of vulnerable individuals to serve a deviant lifestyle. You know, and the more the demands out there, so this business continues to grow. And and that's just another another piece of this is the demand. I mean, it's a complex crime. I get it. That's why law enforcement, I mean, they're 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 underwater, man. They're working it every day, but they can't keep up. Um because the cases are very difficult to prosecute. Um the demand is a summary offense in most states. When I'm saying kids, we've had cases where there's been people trafficked out of college, 19, 20 year olds. So it's across all of that. It's just not 13, 14, 15 year olds. There are there our kids in, in colleges are just as vulnerable, right? We've had cases where they've gone to parties and they were drugged and, you know, they were sexually assaulted. It was filmed. They leverage them with the film. So know? that quick, that's not even, there's that not even quick. a long process. That quick. I mean, wow. th there's a lot of different ways how this occurs. That's a frequent way, too. They have a video. Mm. And then they're, yeah, I mean, how do, you, how do you respond to that? You know, the next day, I mean, we've had a couple of those cases. Uh, and sometimes it, they, they go to their parents, they go to the police. A lot of times they don't. They're just, they feel trapped and they, they just can't come to grips with it. And the next thing you know, they're, they're being trafficked. Talk about why this is increasing so much. I mean, the Internet plays a part in it. So that is sort of a tool that predators can use to access victims. What about the um, you, you talked about the risk and reward you know, for the criminal? Isn't this a, is this an attractive type of crime to get into? And can you talk about that a little bit? Sure, absolutely. Because, you know, th this is second to the drug trade and revenue generated right in the criminal enterprise. Let's take example, a drug dealer, high level or mid, mid level, you know, they got to get the drugs, right? They got to, they got to get them. They got to transport them. They got to pick them up. They got to get them to wherever they're distributing their dope, right? Each stage is very risky. Drug dealers are known to steal from each other <laughs> and kill each other. So, you know, they have this process of, okay, I got to go get them. Now I got to get them here. Now I got to get them to my street dealers, right? And they got to go out and sell. That's a process. Weeks of weeks and weeks. Then they got to collect the money. Then who's ripping me off? Who owes me money, right? Now you got the violence piece in there. We're gonna we're gonna go kill the guy because he never paid us. Then they get their money. Then they got to repeat this whole process over. And the penalties for drug dealing at that level or even mid middle mid levels, are pretty extreme. Ten, twenty, thirty years, if not more. Um, when you, when you have a person and you've basically groomed them to do what you tell them, however that occurred, these, these people can be sold. We've, we've talked to some that were sold 10 to 15 times a day. It's prostitution under the law, right? They don't even see this trafficking because when they do arrest a person for prostitution, they don't say they're being trafficked because their trafficker or their pimp, you know, whatever term you want to use, if you tell them, I'm going to go burn your parents' house down, or you're going to get beat when I bail you out of jail, or I'm going to put that daughter of yours or that son of yours on the corner and make child pornography with them. We've heard it all from, from yeah. survivors.
So if you're arrested, the charges and the penalties are much less, way less dangerous, right? There's no danger here because people just think, and a lot of the buyers don't even realize this. That it's just like, um, I'm just buying sex. They don't realize this whole behind the screen piece of how this person got there and what's occurring to them. Um, so it's much safer. A report come out from Homeland. Um, one trafficker, let's talk sex trafficking for, for a minute. Uh, we'll say a girl. They estimate one trafficker, one female for sex trafficking. That trafficker or pimp, raises about 125, 130,000 a year in their pocket. The average trafficker has three to five. So do the math. I'm looking at wow. three quarters of a mil on up, managing three or four people, right? And basically you're just out there and you have, you know, and as people are in this, there's a term called bottom girl. It's usually a girl who's been there for a long time. They start entrusting the business, making the appointments, getting them to and from, Recruitment, Ghislaine Maxwell, she recruited for Epstein. She went to the high schools. That's, mm -hmm. And it started out as a massage, an extra hundred bucks. We've had cases like that. We, we had a girl, I think she was 16. Her friend was 17. They were hooking up with a guy. And uh, <coughs> it was simply the kiss and hug and for an hour. And he gave him 90 bucks. So she was getting her friend saying, hey, it's an easy 90 bucks, no sex, a little bit of kissing. He you know, hugs and kisses a little bit, 90 bucks. Well, this guy was grooming them to eventually they were going to come and he was going to he was going to take them. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the parents saw these messages in her phone, the 16 year old, and we were able to get involved in, and get that stopped with the law enforcement. Of course, we turned it right over to them. I mean, it's some, sometimes it's stuff that starts like that. It's just easy money for the kids. Uh, you know, it, 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 the scenarios are vast of how it happens and, and at what level, but it always ends up at a bad, at a bad spot, you know, if it continues. So that, that's why, that's why it's increasing because it's not a very risky way to make a living. Now, with that said, laws are starting to change. Um, there are people being sentenced longer if the trafficking element can be proved, but it's also, they're difficult cases in court. When the victims want to want to testify, a lot of times they don't follow all the way through because there's threats happening. That's the main thing. You know, if this person's providing their drugs, they start to withdraw. So now they're weeks going through that. Um, and even sometimes, you know, especially if they've been trafficked for a while, they're, they're not in their element. They've been in this element for four or five years. Now they're sort of out here. They don't know who to trust because... They might have even trusted law enforcement or somebody else in the past, and nothing came of it, you know, for whatever reason. Maybe the, maybe the DA wouldn't take the case, or maybe their friends didn't believe them. Um, so there's a trust issue there, too. Uh, so it's a, it's a difficult position for them, for sure. I wanted to just tell you a couple of things that happened, not directly to me, but it actually happened to one of our employees. Uh, we had a really blonde hair, beautiful looking women came into my husband's establishment with another guy. And she approached a young bartender and say, Hey, uh, I'm not comfortable. I need you to come to the car to do a FaceTime phone call with me because I'm with this guy. And, um, I want to make sure my husband know that I'm with someone, some girl, but asking her to leave our building to go into a vehicle. And she's smart enough recognizing this is not good. And they hung around the bar for a long time. And then I spotted a Cadillac Escalade across the street that with all tinted windows. We wound up calling the police um, to let them know they're, no, they're not going to be anywhere near the vicinity. Um, and when you mentioned the police, there was a local police actually was having sex with a teenage boy. And he would go and pick him up from school and, you know, give him beer, having, you know, and, and wind up having sexual relationship with the, with the boy. And that was several years ago. That police of course was fire, but that was kind of like the scenario. I've never got so close with that until it happened to my own employee. And mm -hmm. she's like, that's human trafficking. We call 911, explain them the situation. And they said, that's definitely human trafficking. 
Yeah.